Ghana, Africa, and the world. Welcome back to Don't Do One TV, the Wonders program. We are on Wonders episode 6. Sorry for the delay, broadcast. There were some reasons beyond our control, so there was a little delay. So, we are being um, last week's Wonders 6 today, and then in a few days' time, we'll do uh, this week's. Wonders, Wonders, that is episode 7. Now, Wonders is a program where we tell incredible stories. But which actually happens. Now, today's program or this week's program is Cadaver Synod. Cadaver Synod. A pope that put his deceased predecessor on trial, a pope called uh, Stephen, Stephen, Pope Stephen the Sixth, who put his deceased predecessor on trial. Now, if you're happy to be my friend this evening, kindly get some popcorns, get seated, and let get the ball rolling. Now, remember, don't do one TV, more entertainment more education now the cadaver synod also called the cadaver trial or in latin called the synodus horrenda is a name commonly given to the ecclesiastical trial of pope formosus who had been dead for around seven to nine months in the basilica of saint john lateran in rome during the during January 897. Now, this thing happened in the medieval period. In the medieval period. The trial was conducted by Pope Stephen VI himself, the successor to Formosus. The successor to Formosus successor, Pope Boniface VI. Now, Stephen had Formosus course assumed and brought to the papal court for judgment. He accused Formosus of perjury and of having acceded to the papacy illegally. At the end of the trial, Formosus was pronounced guilty and his papacy retroactively de declared null and void, together with all his rulings in the past. Now let's zoom in on onto the details of this story. The story of the cadaver synod resembles the 9th century version of the McDonald's hot coffee lawsuit. On the surface, it, it, it looked silly. But once you delve into it, it actually made sense or there was more to it. Now, let's get to the background of this spectacle. In the 9th century, when we say 9th century, we mean from the, uh, from the period 800 to 899. Those years, we call it the 9th century. It was during the medieval period. Now, in the 9th century, the Pope had the power to crown the Holy Roman Emperor. This meant that Popes were involved with political intrigue and many of them didn't live long after assuming office. Now, Stephen's case was not an exception. Now, Stephen the sixth predecessor for Moses reluctantly crowned the Duke of Spoleto as a Holy Roman Emperor and later crowned the Duke's son, Lambert. Now, in the year 1896, Formosus reversed course and crowned one of his allies, King Anulf of the East France. You know, the Franks were part of an empire in the medieval period. Shortly after becoming the emperor, Anulf became paralyzed and returned to his native Germany, and Formosus himself perished or died. Now, when Stephen VI took the papacy, the crown was still in dispute. Stephen had closer ties to Lambert and wanted to reinstate his ally. And the cadaver synod was 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 instituted as a means of delegitimizing Formosus and reversing all his decisions as a pope. Now Stephen ordered Formosus' seven to nine month old corpse to be clothed or apparelled, and actually brought into the papal courtroom, and then he appointed a deacon who would speak on behalf of the dead Formosus. So that all the accusations were leveled against this uh, supposed uh, deacon who was to represent Formosus. 
Now doing the so-called sham trial, Stephen accused a cadaver. When we say cadaver, that is a dead body. In American school, we call the dead body is cadaver. So during the so-called sham trial, Stephen accused a cadaver of everything from perjury. Uh, when we say perjury, it means that you are maybe you are a president or something, or you are an MP, and you have you have you have, you have sworn on on the oath. Then you lie on the oath. You understand? That is called perjury. So during the so-called sham trial, Stephen accused a cadaver of everything from perjury to violating cannot 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 law. When you say canonical law, like the law that uh, governs the Pope and then those under him in a particular area. What was left of Moses dead body was that he was found guilty and thrown into the river called the Tibet or the Tibet River. But the trial itself was so controversial that Stephen's reign only lasted for a few more months until he was stripped of his papal seal and executed. Now in the course of the program, we'll go into the details of um, what happened to uh, Pope Stephen after this sham trial. Now Cadaver Synod it happened during the turbulent times in Italy. Now, the Cadaver Synod and its related events took place during the period of political instability in Italy. This period, which lasted from the middle of the 19th uh, century, that is, uh, 1850 onwards, to the middle of 10th century, to uh, around 950 onwards, was marked by rapid succession of pontiffs. When we say pontiffs, that is the popes. So, we a, a pope could also be called pontiff. That is, say we say pontificate. That is a period of a pope. Between 872, the year 872, and then year 965, two dozen popes were appointed. So that is 20, uh, 20 something popes between that period. That was rather fast. And between 896 and 904, there was a new pope every year. It shows that there was a turbulent times at the time. Oftentimes, these brief uh, papal reigns were the result of political machinations of local Roman factions, about which few sources survived. Now, Formosus became bishop of Porto Santa Rufina in 1864 during the pontificate of Pope Nicholas I. That is during the time. That Pope Nicholas I was reigning. Now, in the year 1866, he was sent as a legate to Bulgaria, and was and was so successful in this position that the Bulgarian ruler called the Boris I asked the Pope to appoint him Archbishop of Bulgaria. Nicholas refused to give permission because the fifth, fifteenth canon of the Second Council of Nicaea forbade a bishop from administering more than one see, a law. When we say see, it is a law that was supposed to prevent bishops from building up their own faith domes. Actually, in modern times, when we say see, it is a law that governs the, the, the popes and then those uh, rulers under, under, under the pope. So we call it see. So in the, medieval, in the medieval times, a see was a law that was supposed to prevent the bishops from building up more than, uh, more than their own little faith domes. Once a few domes, it is like a terrain, a territory. You understand that um, one governs. So when we say your your your, your fifth, that is your turf, your, your your battlefield, your grounds where you rule. Now he also, that is Nicholas, also traveled to Constantinople. Now Constantinople uh, is what we call in the medieval times. That was a um, Istanbul. So he also traveled to Constantinople and the Carolingian court where he met Arnulf of Carinthia. That is a Frankish Carolingian king who aspired to the throne of Italy. Now the Carolingian was an empire at the time. You understand? It was, it was an empire at the time. In 1875, shortly after Charles the Bolt, that's Charles, and then he was called by the term bald, that is like bald head, imperial coronation, for Moses fled Rome in fear of the, the Pope John VIII. It was like there was a rift between them. A few months later, in 1876, at a synod, in, that is some kind of conference or some kind of um, 
uh, a big meeting of the Pope uh, with his people in a particular area or enclave. A few months later, in 1876, at a synod in Santa Maria Rotunda, John VIII issued a series of accusations against uh, Formosus and some of his associates. He asserted that Formosus had corrupted the mind of the Bulgarians so that so long as Formosus was alive, they would not accept any other bishop from the apostle, apostolic see that he and his fellow conspirators had attempted to usurp papacy from John, and finally that he had he had deserted his see in Porto and was conspir conspiring against the salvation of the state and of their beloved Charles the Bold. Now Formosus and his associates were excommunicated. When you say excommunicated, it means that you be excluded from all um, church sacraments and then uh, festivities or activities like that. Now in 1879, the year 1879, at another council held at Troyes, or Troyes, John may, may have confirmed the excommunications. Now, he also legislated more generally against those who plundered, who plundered ecclesiastical ecclesiastical goods, that is, some kind of official church goods. According to the 10th century author Auxilius of Naples in Italy, Formosus was also present at the council. Now, Auxilius says he begged the bishops for their forgiveness and in return for the removal of their excommunication. Swan oath to remain a layman, that is, he was no longer a pope or something, for the rest of his life to never again enter Rome and to make no attempt to resume his for my... or a leadership role at Porto. Now, this story also appears to be because in other um, literary materials, there was a description of the synod that has not mentioned for most presence in the same synod or meeting or conference and said that instead John confirmed his excommunication. Now, after the death of John VIII in December of the year 1882, for most of troubles apparently ended. But that was where he got it wrong. Now, Formosus resumed his bishop, bishoporic role at Porto, where he remained until elected Pope on 6th October 1891. Now, yet this earlier quarrel with John VIII formed the basis for the accusations made at the Cadaver Synod. Now, this so-called cadaver synod, whereby a dead body has been uh, clothed and then put in the seat as though he were not dead and then made to go through um, the hands of a judge. Now, according to, we want to go, go through how it was conducted. Now, according to the 10th century historian, Lut Prand of Cremona, Stephen VI, who organized this uh, posthumous um, synod of Formosus, dead corpse, Stephen VI asked Formosus corpse why he used, who said, the Universal Roman See or Rim, some kind of, uh, he, Formosus, had organized a coup or something like that to move a power uh, or a, a rulership. So that is the Roman See. In such a spirit of ambition, after the death of John VIII, echoing John VIII's own assertion that Formosus had tried to seize papal throne whilst he, John VIII, was alive. Two further accusations were also made against Formosus at the Cadaver Synod that he, Formosus, had committed perjury. That is, he had lied on the oath and that he had attempted to exercise the office of bishop as a layman. You know, as a layperson, you shouldn't go near, once you are a layperson, you are a bishop and you, you lay down your, your bishop rule and you become a layman. You are not to go near it. So any attempt to go near it or anything above that means that you are trying to become overly ambitious. Now, these 
are related to the oath for Moses is said to have sworn before the Council of Troy at Troia, uh, Troyes in eight, the year 1878. Now, the cadaver synod is generally presumed to have been politically motivated. For Moses crowned Lambert of Spoleto, co ruler of the Holy Roman Empire in eight, the year 1892. Lambert, father, Guy the third of Spoleto, had earlier been crowned by John the Eighth. You see, conflicting issues. Now, in the year 1893, Formosus, apparently nervous about Guy's aggression, invited the Carolingian Anulf of Carinthia to invade Italy and receive the imperial crown. Now, Anulf's, Anulf's invasion failed, and Guy the III died shortly afterwards. Now, yet, Formosus renewed his invitation to Anulf in, in the year 1895, and early the next year, Anulf crossed the Alps and entered Rome, where Formosus crowned him as Holy Roman Empire. So it's a kind of, you help me, I help you kind of thing. Afterwards, the Frankish army departed, and the Anulf and Anulf and Formosus died within a month of each other in the year 1896. So like for example, you die in February, um, Anulf dies in February, and Formosus dies in say, April, May, thereabout. Now, Formosus was succeeded briefly by Pope Boniface VI, who himself died two weeks later. Turbulent times. Now, Lambert and his mother, the Empress Angeltrude, entered Rome around the time that Stephen VI became Pope, and the Cadaver Synod was conducted directly afterwards at the beginning of the year 1897. Now, what was the interpretation? Uh, uh, of the Cadaver Synod findings. Now, the dominant interpretation of this event until the early 20th century was straightforward. Formosus had, had, had been a pro Calungian, that is, he, he liked the Franks, and his crowning of Lambert in uh, 18, the year 1892 was quest. Now, after the death of Arnulf and the collapse of the Caroling Carolingian authority in Rome, Lambert entered. The city enforced Stephen the sister to convene the Cadaver Synod, both to reassert his claim to the imperial crown and perhaps also to exact a uh, posthumous revenge against Formosus. Now, this view is now considered obsolete. This particular view we just mentioned is uh, considered obsolete. Following the argument put forward by one Joseph Dar, D U H R, in the year 1932, that Dar pointed out that Lambert was in attendance at the Ravenna Council of the year 1898, convened under Pope John the Ninth. Now, it was this proceeding that the decrees of the Cadaver Synod were revoked. According to the written acta of the council, Lambert actively approved of the nullification, some kind of uh, uh, proceedings like like writings of the council, so some kind of a synopsis of the council or the writings or the minutes of the, of the council. When we go into it, it showed that Lambert actively approved of the nullification. Now, if Lambert, if Lambert and Andrew Truth had been architect of Moses' degradation, then Dar asked, how was John the Ninth able to submit to the canons? which condemned the, the odious synod for the approbation of the em emperor, that is Lambert himself, and his bishops. How could John the Ninth have dared to broach the matter be before the guilty parties without even making the least allusion to the emperor's participation? Now, this position has been accepted by another scholar called Girolamo Analdi, who argued that Formosus did not pursue an exclusively post Calungian uh, policy, and that he even had friendly relations with Lambert, and as late as the year 1895, the year before he died. Now, their relations only soured or became worse when Lambert's cousin, Guy the Fort of Spoleto, marched on Benevento and expelled the Byzantines, the, by, by the, the Byzantines, that is the Turkish people, now, at the time of the Turkish Empire. Now, Formosus panicked at this uh, aggression. So Formosus panicked at the aggression and sent emissaries into Bavaria 
Meet an elf's help. Now, Analdi argues that it was Guy the Fourth who had entered room along with Lambert and his mother and go in the, uh, in the in the period January of the year 1897 who provided the impetus for the synod for the said synod now what was the aftermath of the Karaba synod now the Maccabi spectacle turned public opinion in Rome against uh, Stephen VI the Formosus body washed up the banks of the uh, river Taiba or Tiba and a rumor said that or had it that it had begun to perform miracles that the body had begun to perform miracles now a public uprising arose and deposed and imprisoned Stephen the Sixth, who organized that posthumous synod on the body of uh, Formosus he was strangled in prison allegedly in July or August of the year 1897 now in the Period of December of the year 1897, Pope Theodore II, that is, year 1897, convened a synod that annulled the cadaver synod, rehabilitated Formosus, and ordered that his body, which had been recovered from the Tiber River or the Tiber River, be reburied in St. Peter's Basilica in Pontifical Vestments, where they buried the popes. Now, in the year 1898, John IX, that is, Year 1898 to year 900 also nullified the Cadaver Synod. So two posts had nullified had nullified the Cadaver Synod, convening one synod in Rome and another in Ravenna. The two synod also affirmed the findings of the Tudor II Second Synod, ordered the actor of the Cadaver Synod destroyed so that the writings or the minutes. Or the recordings of the Cadaver Synod destroyed, and then excommunicated the seven cardinals who were involved in the Cadaver Synod and prohibited prohibited any further any future trial of the course. But that was where they also got wrong because future popes who had interest in this thing also had to uh, consider reversing this reversal of the 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 the, the, the posthumous synod or Cadaver Synod. Now, however, Pope. Sergius III, uh, who ruled from 1904 to 1911, who was also a bishop, had taken part in the Cadaver Synod as a co-judge, overturned the rulings of Theodore II and John IX, reaffirming Formosus conversion and had a laudatory epitaph inscribed on the tomb of uh, Stephen VI. Now, this brings us to the end of um, this evening. Monday's episode 6, which was supposed to have been brought to you a few days ago last week. Now, we thank you all for giving us years. Now, if you watch this uh, program and you are not our subscriber, or you have never subscribed to the new TV, or you subscribe and you accidentally unsubscribe, kindly look at the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on subscribe the red subscribe click on the bell that's the notification button and then click on all so that next time we have the upload of a video youtube will automatically alert you and when you are alerted kindly watch video to the end like or dislike based upon the uh, aspect of the content you like or you do not like then take part in the live premiere by um, joining those who are commenting doing the live commenting now if because of one or two reasons you are not able to um, you're able to watch the video but you're not able to comment in the live comment side after the video you may comment on the main comment side now remember to share which is important to us make sure on all social media handles available to you facebook facebook groups whatsapp whatsapp groups now kindly tell a relative of yours a girlfriend a boyfriend a spouse of yours about don't do one tv now don't do one tv more entertainment more education Thank you all for giving us yes. Now, until coming weeks, Wonders program, that is Wonders 7. Bye-bye.